I think the, uh, uh, those four four simple techniques um, are a really great place to start, and a really really easy place to start that can fit with any piece of music. Um, I could do imitation with "Ready the Way." It would it would still work. I can stick a pedal tone underneath it. Um, I could put silence in between the phrases. Mm -hmm. uh, I could put all the melody in the first inversion. That would work. Um, uh, I, I have a couple other. Um, the Carrie Landry tune would also work. I have. I pulled out the tune "Comfort, Comfort, All My People," which is a uh, an old hymn. Um, it works with a Gregorian chant, like O Come, O Come, Emmanuel. So all of these techniques work with any style and can work with, to me, in my mind, with any group of musicians, if, whether you're with a folk group, at a piano or a keyboard or at the organ. And any of them can be as simple or as complicated as you would like to make them. Mm hmm mm hmm so if we were just just to stay on this, if we were to um, use want to use the instruments instruments um, on this, how would you kind of perceive creating some type of improvisatory roadmap um, with the instruments? And the, the reason I mean it is like um, I'm I'm just going to use a hypothetical I'm making up. Let's say it's 11:30 mass. You have now played two other masses, and you know for a fact that your communion song is going to be short. Like you just, you know, like it's, it's a great song, but like we know sometimes it's just going to be a little too short. So you want to say to the instruments right before mass starts, okay, heads up, we're going to need to kill a little time, fill a little space at communion. How do we help guide them through that? That's a great question. Um, so one person needs to be the conductor of the train list. And um, that means you potential improviser should be the person in charge. And the way I usually do it is, or the, or the way I have done it in the past is I give them a simple task, which is when I give my, when I nod my head, that's what I want you to play the melody. And then when you're done, you're done. Or, or I'll, I'll label things, I'll label phrases with numbers. And then I'll hold up a finger and say, we're gonna play phrase one. So let's take, um, Comfort, comfort, all my people here is one, two, three, four phrases, like a good hymn. And I might hold up, you know, let's do one, let's do phrase one. And then uh, uh, inst the instrumentalists will join in on what we decide there. So let's, let's say we're in a folk band and I'm at a piano and I have a guitar and bass. And, so it's a, and let's say we have a violin too. Let's just Put, put our hypothetical folk band together for a second. <laughs> and so I would say, okay, bass player, I want you to play this pedal tone. Guitar, stick with, you know, maybe just a couple of, maybe the guitar will double the pedal tone. Violin, I want you to play the melody. And then I, underneath it, will play the first inversion chords. Um, and, then, and then in between each of those phrases, I might, uh, say, okay, well, then after we do the first phrase, I'm going to play for a little bit. I'm just going to noodle for a little bit. I'm going to play some pretty chords. And then I'll hold my fingers up, phrase two. Okay, and we get through that. I'll play some pretty chords. And then I see that things are winding up, that, that the procession has ended and the priest is heading back to the altar. Oh, no, we need to shorten this. I hold my fingers up and say phrase four. So we can then, then we can finish to the end. And then if I need to tack on a little more time myself, I would do it that way. So, and this comes back to the, the whole idea of having a notebook and writing this stuff out as a plan. Um, th this, this is when I say improvisation is all about planning. That's what I'm talking about, that you work with either yourself or with other musicians say, this is how we're going to do it. Not getting into the details, but having an overall arc for how things are gonna go from beginning to end. Okay. And, and I was, and you know, I always say, you know, leaving some space there for yourself to have a flexible amount of time is really important. I'm going to ask you a question that now contradicts what you just said, <laughs> 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 because this is a podcast where I love to explore every option. Um, cool. So, what if I didn't plan? What if I need something and I go, oh my gosh, I. I let's say, oh my gosh, <laughs> I didn't plan a prelude. I need to improvise something. What do I do? I have a solution for you. Okay. <laughs> I have two. Actually, I have two okay, solutions. 
Um, the first one is, and this is um, this is a, a tried and true formula of music uh, of Western music for the past uh, centuries, which is follow a very simple ABA format. And by that I mean, uh, um, for those of us who study music theory, um, sonata form, which is this highly complicated uh, uh, way to uh, uh, develop a melody and transform it is actually just simply an ABA. Uh, uh, for me as a keyboard player, I've studied, I'm going to play this Bach minuet. Oh, good Lord. I, those are <laughs> ABA forms. Uh, um, and I like point, I think this is fair, also fair pointing out that a lot of verse like songs are actually written in a ABA format because you have verses and choruses making up an A section. You have a bridge that is a contrast to that and then it returns back to the verse and chorus. And so even, even a lot of songs are built in a, an ABA-like format. Now what's great about this as a principle is that it basically, well, so what you're doing is an A section is you have your theme. B is a contrast to it, and A is a return to it. In fact, what I just described actually earlier, a second ago, about like you know, oh, you have you 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 noodle for a little bit, then you have the instruments come in. Then you noodle for a little bit, then you have the instruments come in. Again, that has that like you have a, a one thing, then you have a thing that contrasts it, then you have the other thing, then you have the thing that contrasts it. So again, it's always this like a game of contrasts. Um, it is a an absolutely tried and true formula. Uh, again, it's existed for so long, and it's, it's people still use it. Um, so let's take uh, a comfort, comfort all my people here for a second. Um, uh, let's say your your priest has decided I want to sing this, or, or he tells you what his homily is, and he's going to quote this hymn, and you didn't plan this hymn. I've definitely done that before, where I'll have a priest will quote a hymn and then I was like oh let's change the offertory to enough right. to this other hymn because I want to I want to be right there with with the homily because it's so yes. that's so cool mm -hmm. and so let's say let's say <laughs> hypothetical here actually he actually prepares you <laughs> I'm going to quote this hymn <laughs> so you're going to change it at the beginning and um you're like okay so we're gonna do this all right I, I have planned this other prelude, which matched my opening hymn. Now I need to come up with something else. So a good ABA format, say for like this hymn, and actually this, this hymn tune is written in an ABA format because you have the tune. That line repeats again. Then you have uh, the, third, the third phrase. which is different than the first two. It's rhythmically very similar. And then you have the last line. Um, which ends very similar to the first phrase. So even that in its structure has an ABA like format. Um, mm -hmm. Just going back to the, uh, it's the same thing with uh, Curtis St Stevens piece. It's you have a chorus and you have a verse, and then you have a chorus. That's a perfect opportunity for ABA-like form. Um, same with the Carol Landry, same with the, the chant. So that's when you can say, okay, well, how do I want to plan this out? Okay, I want to plan this out in an ABA form. So I'm going to use the, I'm going to use the the first line, and because it repeats, I'm not, I'm gonna use that first line and I'm gonna really emphasize that first line as my A. And then I'm going to use that third line as my B material. And then I'll use the first line again as my A material because I want to come back to that. I want to make sure that's the line that people, that's the music people are going to recognize the most because it's what starts. So I want people to really anticipate being able to sing that. So right there, I've just outlined. Now in my notebook, I would write that out, say first line, second line, B. And then I might maybe use some descriptors as to how I would treat that. So the first line, I'm going to do an imitation. The third, the third phrase, I'm going to do in drones and maybe some, I'm going to maybe add a little bit of harmony to it. And then I'll go back to the imitation. So why, why don't I demonstrate that a little bit here and get, so you can get an idea of what that would sound like.
little little filler here. Left hand start this time. cadence very strong cadence here. right now i want to go to something different in b so this time i'm going to use drones and those wonderful inversion chords maybe a little slow we'll do both of those again maybe a little more harmony in there Back to my A. And harmony at the end of that and now everyone's gonna oh i know that tune and dotty and then after you finish your prelude everyone's ready for the procession and then you start the tune is oh there's my a you hear the aba i heard parts of the i heard the opening phrase i heard that contrasting section and it just works it's the magic about aba as a form uh, i i uh, in in the craziest of improvisations I've done in my life, I almost always come back to an A. Like even if we, there's a form of A, B, C, D, E, F, G, I almost always come back to A because there's something so satisfying about returning home. Uh, it's what a lot of pieces of music do. You start start in, it's like a video game. You start at level one and you adventure <laughs> all the way through things. And then you end up back at home at the end of the game. <laughs> and there's something mm -hmm. just just rich and satisfying about that kind of journey. So mm -hmm. I like as a default, ABA is, and it works with just any, in any, in almost in any situation with any piece of music, you can divide it up in those ways. Um, one alternative to alter, alternative way to do that would be to follow the form of your tune. Um, so if let's say we use this Curtis Steven piece, it would be, I might use the, this opening phrase and then use the verse for my materials and then come back to the chorus at the end. And that again, for informs an ABA. A um, couple other things I can throw there. You can use the same harmonies. There's nothing wrong with following. You don't have to reharmonize everything. You can follow harmonies that are given to you. Um, you know, and there's, uh, I did a couple things on piano for the organ. You can really change variety with so many colored stops. You can use solo stops and mm -hmm. um, like with the imitation, you know, use a use the cornet and a reed and that sounds great. Um, yeah, actually, can, can I give a suggestion on that too? Sure. Um, one of my favorite things that challenges me that I love whenever I'm improvising um, is actually putting the pedal just on a pedal tone. Let's just say on, let's just say I was doing O Come, O Come, Emmanuel um, on the organ. I'm putting a pedal tone in the pedal and just putting my foot on E above middle C with like a four foot flute and that's it. And usually of course in organ registration, we wanna make sure that we're using like an eight and a 16 foot for depth. But if we just have that pedal tone in the pedal, then it frees up your hands to kind of do some of the other techniques that you're doing, but it has that lightness sound that we don't have sometimes whenever we set up our pedal registration. Yeah, and I, I, I piggy piggyback on that. You know, a pedal tone doesn't have to be underneath everything. It can also be over. Yeah. Um, uh, uh, I just did comfort, comfort. If if I did that with a a higher note up above pedal F. Oh, I like that a lot. Ooh. And that's just that's just. <sighs> magic that's lovely <laughs> and it's 
I, you could eat like you're saying put a forefoot on the pedal in the pedals and then your feet don't have to do anything right yeah <laughs> and, then, so, and then and that was just right there that was one note up high and my left hand and my right hand doing things in version um it, it's uh it's not hard it's not hard to make a to make some really effective songs and music with very little material um mm -hmm. <laughs> maybe part of the key too to take away if you're listening is maybe in terms of material less is more yes yeah absolutely um 100 percent that that adage doesn't just apply to jazz it applies to mm -hmm. any kind of improv you do keeping things simple that's you know that's why i say like silence is so effective such an effective way to uh, uh let things breathe and it is the simplest way to make music uh, you know just not have music at all and it really challenge it's challenging and i think uh but yeah that's keeping it simple uh, um i can improvise a fugue but i don't always need to so i don't mm -hmm. you know right, right. <laughs> let the moment guide you I really think that Advent in particular, Advent's one of my favorite seasons. I, I always lament that it goes so quickly in some ways because some of the music is just some of my favorite of the year and we can only sing it for four, year, for four weeks every year. And so I love the idea about like prolonging the mystery, if you will, or like prolonging that Advent feeling. Um, and you're right, like just a simple lift and breath physically as you play. Not, not while you're leading people in the congregation, but like when you're no. improvising. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, I mean, what, what a beautiful, like, like what a beautiful lift of the spirit, just that simple thing alone. Yeah, it's, it's uh, one of my, uh, yeah, I, I agree. Advent's one of my favorite seasons. I like Lent for the same reason. Um, mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. I would definitely not use that silence in Christmas. <laughs> Christmas no, I <laughs> that's, that's not the time, but that, you know, that's, um, Advent being this anticipation, Lent being a very inward looking season, it affords you to do these things and it's such a simple and effective way to enrich, enrich your improvisations and enrich in ultimately enrich the liturgy. Right, right, exactly. Well, as we wrap up today, do you have any other tips or suggestions that the listeners should think about moving forward, especially during this Advent season? Write it all down. Hmm. You know, mm -hmm. I, I, uh, just a quick anecdotal story. I, a couple of years ago, I got commissioned to write a sonata for the American Guild of Organists National Convention, which is really cool. And then I got encouraged to write a second one for competition. Um, and I, I, having written one piece of music that was meant for sort of the average player, and then having to write a second one back to back, that was really, really hard. I found that, I, and I was having trouble finding musical material to use. And I found an old notebook, I was going through my old notebooks where I write things down, and I found a little idea and that I'd written 20 years ago, and that became the catalyst for my next cool. composition. Now, as improvisation goes, what I mean by that is, if you find something you like, if you find something that sounds great, write it down. It, our, our chances to remember something are, we're humans, we're pretty bad at remembering things. Um, so I, I, I am a very proponent of, if you do something cool, you like the way it sounds, write it down. I, um, you know, I, I'll say like one of my favorite progressions. I love that progression. I wrote it down once a long time ago and I've never forgotten it because I wrote it down. I mm. reinforced it. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, that, that as an example, is to me, like, that's, that's, that's the, note, that's the purpose of the notebook um, is to put down your ideas and, you know, it doesn't have to make sense to anyone else. It all needs to make sense to you. Um, you know, if note reading is a challenge for you, then just write down the chords. You know, uh, um, if you're a guitarist, uh, get a tab book. You know, uh, there there are many many ways you can you can keep track of these things. And you know that that's why I say the this idea that improvisation can be you don't have to know music theory, 
but it can help help you learn music theory by exploring the instrument you play and and through that discover sounds you like and then write it down so you have a way to remember it and use it again because uh, all these all these tricks all these tips are are part of a painter's palette um they're they're tools in your toolbox and the more tools you have the more things you can fix and build uh the bigger your painter palette the more colors you have to use so that's why i say write everything down write write it all down it's just uh it's the best way to go it sounds like maybe you're telling us to ask for a manuscript paper notebook for christmas <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> uh, if, if you're a crazy person like me, you ask for several of them. <laughs> <laughs> don't do what I don't don't do that. But yeah, I, you know, it, it takes me takes me years to fill one up. But um, here now I've, I've filled up three now. And I'm working on my fourth one. Hmm. And I'll probably fill that up within the next year. Uh, and, and it's a, you know, I, 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 would, I would say to any listeners out there that like, if that doesn't work for you, you know, if you like to write things in your phone, write things in your phone, mm -hmm. you know, uh, like any method by which you can reinforce what you're doing is really, really helpful. There are a lot of people too that use iPads now. And so yeah. if you're listening, there's an app, uh, there are a million apps, but there's an app that I use called penultimate P E N ultimate penultimate. Oh. And, um, you, it, it really is for note taking, but you can change the page so that it looks like manuscript paper. And so you can just do a quick little jot that way too. Awesome. Yeah. 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 yeah use tech. <laughs> Saves paper. I, I'm tech. a I'm I'm a pencil paper person. I still my that was my mm -hmm. training. So I like using mm -hmm. paper. Um mm -hmm. but you know that's a, that's a, that's it. Whatever works, you know, for, for you listeners out there, whatever routine works for you. That's that's my encouragement. Mm -hmm. You know, find a way to put something down so you don't forget it. I guess that's it. Okay. That's it. Yeah. Ben, this has been so great. I mean, you and like I said, when I started this way, you and I have known each other for a long time, but it's been such a joy to hear you nerd out on improvisation today and just kind of share <laughs> the passion that I know you've had for so many years on it. So thank you so much for your time and your tips and your wisdom. Oh, it's such a pleasure. Uh, and, and I just, everybody out there, just, just make stuff up. <laughs> just try, <laughs> just do it, just make stuff up. It's yep. don't, you don't have to follow us on the page who said they were right anyways. That's right. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you for having me, Amanda. It's been a pleasure. Thank you. You too, Ben. Thanks.